Hello, I'm Dr. Sandra Freihofer, liaison to ACIP, the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices. Welcome to our ACP 2021 Adult Immunization Series. The topic, ACIP's new adult immunization schedule. What's new for 2021? Each year, ACIP's Adult Schedule Workgroup takes a fresh look at the schedule in an effort to better and more efficiently and hopefully more succinctly portray just the right of information, not too much, but enough to be helpful and with links to resources to learn more. It also incorporates any changes and updates based on ACIP's new recommendations. I think we all would agree that 2020 was an unusual year. Although ACIP had a total of 10 meetings in 2020 in contrast to its usual three, seven of them were dedicated exclusively to COVID-19 vaccine. The final addition to the 2021 schedule is what we've all worked so hard to achieve. COVID vaccines are on the schedule. They're not on the graphics, but they're in the notes. And there's also a hyperlink to ACIP's interim recommendations for use of COVID-19 vaccines. The COVID vaccine recommendation is included within the scope of EUA, emergency use authorization, or full licensing, BLA, biologics license application. Although Section 3203 of the CARES Act requires coverage of COVID-19 vaccines recommended by ACIP, specific language in the schedule is needed to ensure any administration fees will be covered by insurance. That language is there. Another change for this year, ACIP's work group for the adult and child adolescent schedules have been combined. The reason is to promote harmony and graphic style and in the wording of recommendations in an effort to streamline flow of information throughout the life cycle. But during these work group discussions, it became apparent that physicians and others who care for adults maybe think a little bit differently. We still need and benefit from more obvious ticklers and reminders on the graphics than those caring for kids. Efforts have been made to harmonize the adult and the child adolescent schedule using the same language in the notes wherever possible. Color code keys remain the same, but for one deletion and one addition. Pink for delay until after pregnancy is out. It's been replaced with an asterisk on red, meaning vaccinate after pregnancy. Other color code changes remain unchanged. Yellow still means recommended if meets age requirement, lacks documentation of vaccination, or lack evidence of past infection. Purple means recommended for adults with an additional risk factor or another indication. Orange means precaution. Blues for recommendations based on shared clinical decision-making. The key for red's been giving an asterisk and a tweet. Red still means not recommended, contraindicated, vaccine should not be administered, but wording with asterisk adds language, vaccinate after pregnancy. Gray still means no recommendation or not applicable. Please note that no recommendation does not mean not recommended. Vaccines not recommended are color-coded red. A few notes about organization. Vaccine order on the intro page and in the notes is alphabetical order. Vaccine order on table one vaccines by age group, and on table two, vaccines by medical and other conditions are the same, but not in alphabetical order. Vaccine rows for these are ordered by color grouping design and style to make the graphics more artistically pleasing. Here's a rundown of the 2021 changes. ZVL, Zoster Vaccine Live, brand name Zostavax is out. It's been taken off the 2021 schedule. It was no longer available in the U.S. as of July 1, 2020. Any existing doses expired on November 17, 2020. This takes away a row on all three graphics, the intro page and tables one and two. The rest of the intro page remains the same. It still conveniently lists vaccines and trade names. A new MEN ACWY vaccine, MEN Quad V, has been added as an additional product choice. The intro still has convenient links to pertinent information, including a link to complete ACIP recommendations. Table one looks at vaccine recommendations by age group. There's only one major change from 2020. 
the addition of purple to the TD TDAP row, in addition to some minor editing and tweaking of wording on overlays. TD or TDAP row is now split for all ages with purple for the TDAP in each pregnancy or TD TDAP for wound management and with a yellow bar indicating need for routine tetanus booster every 10 years. Specifics about wound management have also been added to the notes. This change was received positively by CDC staff who indicated tetanus for wound management was a subject of many provider questions. For clean and minor wounds, a tetanus booster within 10 years is a recommendation. For other more serious wounds, the need for tetanus booster interval is reduced to five years. And there's still a link to ACIP's full recommendation. Look at table two, recommended immunizations by medical conditions and other indications. There are two overarching changes. Pink is out, blue is in for shared clinical decision-making. That's been added. There have been substantial changes to the pregnancy column on table two. All of the 2020 pink for delay has been replaced with the red color key, asterisk, not recommended, vaccinate after pregnancy. Also in the pregnancy column, RZV, recombinant zoster vaccine, brand name Shingrix, has gone from pink to gray, meaning no recommendation or not applicable. Red with asterisk, meaning not recommended, vaccinate after pregnancy, also applies to HPV, as well as live vaccines, MMR, varicella, and LAIV. The color blue has also been introduced to table two. Blue has replaced yellow for varicella vaccination for those living with HIV with CD4 counts 200 and greater, indicating shared clinical decision-making for this live virus vaccine for this subset of immunocompromised patients. For diabetics under 60, Hep B is still yellow, indicating all diabetics under 60 should receive it. But Hep B vaccination for diabetics 60 and older is now blue, indicating shared clinical decision-making. Overall, vaccine notes have been streamlined, tweaked, and harmonized. Under the influenza vaccine section, notes for the egg allergy section have been revised. Previous language stated that persons with history of severe egg allergy needed to be administered vaccine in a medical setting. New language states that this medical setting caveat is not necessary if egg-free flu block or egg-free flu vax are being administered. New drug-specific spacing requirements between LAIV and use of flu antiviral medication have also been added. LAIV should not be used if received antiviral medication oseltamivir or zanamivir in the previous 48 hours, paramivir in the previous five days, or biloxivir in the previous 17 days. For hepatitis vaccination for travelers in a hurry, an accelerated Hep A, Hep B twin works dosing schedule has been specified with the option of doses at 0, 7, and 21 to 30 days, followed by a booster at 12 months. So that's what's new in adult vaccination for 2021. Happy vaccinating! For the American College of Physicians, I'm Dr. Sandra Freihofer.